Hey guys, my name is Minas. Today we're going to be going over the embryology of the external reproductive system of both male and females. This video is part two to my two previous videos where we discussed the embryology of the internal reproductive systems of both male and females. Today we're going to be talking about the external genitalia development. Okay, so this video will be broken down into four parts. The first part, we're going to talk about the indifferent stage. That's previous to when we are differentiating into male or female, so prior to seven weeks. We're going to be going over the male external genitalia, the female external genitalia, and also variations in sexual development, ambiguous genitalia. And what this video will not be talking about or discussing is gender identity. So if little Johnny grows up to be 15, 16, whatever, and then decides he wants to be a female, perfectly fine, but we aren't going to be discussing that in this video. Let's keep it strictly 100% science, and we'll talk about only what kind of variations that can happen, so what you're given with uh, from birth, okay? Great. So let's, as usual, start right at the beginning, and I'm going to break down everything so simply so that any beginner to embryology should be able to understand everything that's going on. So let's begin at the beginning at the blastula. The blastula is a ball of cells that's the result of fertilization. Of course it differentiates from other balls of cells and it will further differentiate and this whole process from the fertilization to gastrulation is discussed in a previous video that I have on my channel. But essentially what happens is this ball of cells travels down the uterine tube into the uterine canal, implants onto the uterine wall and a process of gastrulation will form three germ layers. The ectoderm, the mesoderm, and the endoderm. And this is an oversimplification for this. Where it's color-coded, we have the ectoderm in blue, mesoderm in red, and endoderm in green. The ectoderm will become skin and, and nervous system tissue. The red bit will has three parts. It has the paraxial mesoderm, the intermediate mesoderm, and then the lateral plate mesoderm. And in green we have the endoderm, which will mostly form epithelial linings of the internal organs and GIT, to keep it very simple. So as we can tell, we are initially, this is a cross-section of that pancake in that implanted into the uterine wall. We cut it up this way, look up, that's what you see. And of course it folds and differentiates and becomes your whole person. Okay, that's a very quick introduction to embryology. Now let's talk about the external development, uh, the development of the external genitalia. Let's begin with the indifferent stage. So before week seven, we kind of don't know what what sex the, the growing fetus is. So we will have an indifferent stage where there is a genital tubercle. And the genital tubercle and the cloacal fold is a result of when mesenchyme tissue or cells travel from the primitive streak and it travels down all the way into that region and it forms a, clo a cloacal fold surrounding the cloacal membrane. So first things first, in different stage, mesenchymal cells from the primitive streak travel down into the area next to the cloacal fold forming ridges or elevations in tissue called the cloacal folds. The superior part of the cloacal fold will fuse, forming the genital tubercle, and the inferior part will form both the urethral fold and the anal fold. So, mesenchyme goes to cloacal membrane, cloacal folds are formed, cloacal fold will become urethral fold, genital tubercle, anal fold. Okay, in different stage, done. Now let's talk about male external genital development. The genital tubercle is where the phallus is. The phallus will develop into the penis. And so this view is a view of the reproductive tract from the, this way, where you have the anus at the bottom and the penis or the phallus at the top. And over here is a view from the front. And this is a view if we cut the phallus and look at it this way. So the growing, what happens is that the phallus elongates, pulling the urethral folds with it. And if we cut it, the growing phallus, and have a look at it this way, you'll see that the urethral folds 
are joining until they finally fuse to form the lumen of the urethra. And if the phallus is growing this way and we cut it this way and look like that, you'll have this, where initially the distal end of the phallus is a solid cord of epithelium. That's the result of invasion of ectoderm. It will eventually canalize, forming a full lumen, which is the external penile urethra. Okay, by week 13. So let's just go back to what the anatomy of everything is. Okay, so we have the genital tubercle, which will become the phallus. The urethral fold will be pulled along and eventually fuse, forming the rest of the penis. The scrotal swellings, which is, it's not, it's not drawn in, but it's surrounding the urethral folds. So if we have something like this, this would be the, the scrotal swellings surrounding it. And they will eventually become the scrotum and the testes will, in a normal situation, be located in them. And we have the perineum between the anus and then the scrotum. And eventually, in a male, in a normal situation, the urethral fold will completely fuse, forming the penis, the scrotum, and the anus in a normal situation in a newly born baby. So we have the line of fusion going through the middle, the scrotal swellings at the bottom, and here's the urethral os over there, the opening. And so let's talk real, really quickly about a abnormality in the development. In this case of the urethral fold not closing completely, not fusing properly, we will have a hypospadia, which is essentially an open urethra. Okay, now let's talk about external development of the female uh, genitals. Where in males, the penis comes from the genital tubercle, in females, the genital tubercle will become the clitoris. And rather than rapidly elongating under the um, control of testosterone, estrogen will guide the fe external female development. So we will have slight hyperplasia of the, of the genital tubercle to form the clitoris. The urethral fold will not fuse in a female and will become the labia minora. And the genital swellings, which became the scrotum in males, will become the labia majora. And we have the perineum separating the vagina from the anus. So this is birth, and this is around week 20, where the genital tubercle will become the clitoris, urethral fold will become the labia minora, and the genital swelling will become the labia majora. Okay, that's keeping it very simple. Now you should be able to understand all of your textbooks and get a good grasp for your exams. Very quick summary of what we already spoke about. Mesenchyme cells travel from the primitive streak to the cloacal membrane. That forms the cloacal folds. The cloacal fold will fuse the top, becoming the genital tubercle, which will become the clitoris in a female, or the phallus or the penis in the male. The urethral folds will completely fuse in a male, but not fuse in a female. The anal fold will eventually become the anus in both. The genital swelling in a male will become the scrotal swelling and then the scrotum in a male. And the genital swelling in the female will become the labia majora. And it won't completely fuse. Now we're going to be talking about the variations in sexual development. And again, we are only going to talk about what physically happens and these people generally have a rough time figuring out if they are either male or female or how they will be raised. And so let's talk about what can happen in these situations. I have had a couple of my audience members um, leave comments and say that they are one of these people. And so they have had a lifetime of struggles. They've had multiple surgeries. It's definitely a very tough thing to go through. But let's talk about uh, what kind of things can happen in this situation. Okay. So, variations of sexual development can range from something like a small penis to a very large clitoris. And it can be as simple as that, or you can have what popular culture calls people as hermaphrodites. There is no true human hermaphrodite. A hermaphrodite is a person who would possibly have a penis, a vagina, a uterus, ovaries, testes, breasts, everything. So that means they are both male and female. However, in humans, 
it's never the case where there is the complete set of both female and male um, uh, organs. What is the closest thing to that is people will have ovotestes. That's tissues of both ovarian and testicular uh, origin. And these people, 70% of the time, their genotype is 46XX, and they're usually raised as females. And people that have ovotestes um, can still be confused as to whether they are male or female, but predominantly they will be raised as female. You can have some syndromes where the genotype mismatches with the phenotype, such as the case with congenital adrenal hyperplasia, where you'll have increased production of ACTH and not enough steroid. And so what happens is that the development of the secondary sexual characteristics won't be developed appropriately. Another syndrome, androgen insensitivity syndrome, is where you are a male, but you are insensitive to the testosterone that you produce. And so you might not be able to produce secondary sexual characteristics like a, a beard, um, uh, testosterone won't be able to bind to receptors. There's a variety of kind of um, uh, experiences that you can have with this. Another syndrome which predominantly affects females is a complete androgen insensitivity syndrome. So these females will have a very short vagina and might have testes present, which are remaining in the inguinal region. And this predisposes these people to malignancy, um, which will require surgical excision at some point in their life, unfortunately. Another syndrome where there is a 5-alpha reductase deficiency results in the reduction of dihydrotestosterone conversion from testosterone. And so the people that experience a 5-alpha reductase deficiency will have an underdeveloped penis as well as may or may not have a hypospadias. Kleinfelder syndrome is when you could have a 47XXY or a XXXY genotype. And so you can suffer from infertility, a small testes, and only slight uh, testosterone uh, production, as well as plus minus gynecomastia. Gynecomastia isn't always present in people that have Kleinfelter syndrome. Swire syndrome is an XY female gonadal dysgenesis. You can appear as a normal female on the outside to people. However, you won't menstruate and you won't develop secondary female characteristics. And so you won't, um, so people that have Swire syndrome might not ever have their breasts develop and will never get their period. And the last one is Turner syndrome. And actually I'd like for you guys to tell me what Turner syndrome is in the comments. The, the person who gets who, who can actually tell me in good detail, and it's all correct, I'll send you a copy of this in HD, if you just uh, send me your email as well, okay? Um, that's all I wanna talk about with regarding the development of the external genitalia. I'm steering clear of all of the controversial topics of gender identity, because that's out of the scope of an embryology video, but I did want to actually talk about what kind of things can happen um, in terms of variations of sexual um, development because a lot of people do struggle with this and as a doctor you might see people who come in with uh, any of these syndromes and you need to provide their care for them and you need to empathize for them as well um, great so with that being said I'd love to hear from you leave a comment follow me on Instagram send me a message ask me questions I reply to all messages so shoot me on a message on Facebook um, this HD um, picture will be available to all Patreons as well. Okay, thank you so much.